return. And so you see here that as they stuck this on his head, they were in a sense sticking the crown of a curse. Because the thorns, as we read right there, is what God says will be the curse upon Adam as he sought to make something out of his life now that he's been banished out of the uh, Garden of Eden. So let's go to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. And look, let's look at something there. Book of Galatians chapter 3. Let's look at verse 13. And so it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So what they were putting on his head as a crown of thorns to crown him with a curse. God was using that as a way to be a curse for all of us as he hung on the tree. Because as you know, he was wearing the crown of thorns on the tree. Remember that? But all of that, <coughs> excuse me, all of that was for a purpose. As I said, God is the most purposeful God out there. They thought they were releasing a curse upon him, but he was becoming a curse for you and I. Therefore, we are no longer under a curse. The scripture says that we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Oh, praise the Lord. And so now, anything that is not working in your life, anything, say anything. Yeah. Anything that is not working in your life. Oh, let me put it this way. Curse is the empowerment to fail. Anything that grants power to bring failure into your life, whatever it is, God says that with the crown of thorns on Jesus' head, as his blood came down from his head, it was releasing you from everything that has empowered you in the past to fail. So you don't have now that empowerment to fail. You have rather the empowerment to succeed, which is a blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, thank God. Again, a second point, the point of the blood coming from Jesus' head, as was said about the blood coming from his back. The one on his back was for his healing. The one on his head was to bring redemption from the curse, deliverance from the curse from your lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's talk about the ones that came out of his hands. Point number three. The hands are the symbols of economic capability and your strength. The hands are a symbol of your economic capability and your strength. Uh, let's look at some scriptures here. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 7. This is to help you, some of you, to know that when we celebrate the resurrection, beginning with this Palm Sunday, that we are not doing something just for show. We want to understand all the purposes of it. Oh, praise the Lord. Look at it, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 7. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all that you put your hand unto. Ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God had blessed thee. So you see here that when you will talk about the hands, it is the, 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 the part of you that we use to, to create wealth, if you will. In and, and, and Jesus' day, uh, most people were farmers. Or fishermen. And so they did this with their hands. So the hands are symbols of your economic capability and your strength. Let's go to another place. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 8. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. 
Whatever you use your hand to do, God says what? He will bless you. And so when the blood was flowing out of Jesus' hands, it was for your benefit to prosper you. You have now the blood bar right that whatever you use your hands to do, you will prosper in the doing of it. You have to believe that, you see. You have to believe that. Whatever you put your hands to do, you will prosper because God is a purpose for God. Why, what, didn't, Jesus, why didn't they hit him in a year, if you will? For blood to come out of the year. And he did it through his hands. Because it meant something. It was coming out of his hands. So that your hands will be free to prosper with whoever you put your hands to do. Just like the blood was coming from his back for your healing. Just as the blood was coming from his head for your redemption from every curse, every empowerment to fail in your life. So is the blood coming out of his hand was to help you to prosper. A child of God has to prosper. I don't believe that as a child of God, any one of us should be poor. Oh, praise the Lord. I don't believe that. Any one of us should be poor. Come with me to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. Let me prove that to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty my be rich. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And you say, well, I am not rich yet. I like the word yet. At least you're on your way. Praise the Lord. God wants you to be rich. This is why Jesus suffered for your benefit. When they were nailing him in his hands and blood was oozing out of his hands. The hands that were meant to be used to generate economic capabilities, economic prosperity. God was saying that the blood when it touches you from his hand will provide, produce, procure in your life prosperity. So every child of God who honors the blood of Jesus today, that person ought to also receive the honor from God to be prosperous. But you got to believe it. It doesn't make a difference how impossible that might be. I often say this, Anything that is impossible is a faith project. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of either an audio or video copy. CDs and audio tapes are $5 and video cassettes or DVDs are 10 Thank you for watching this program. Uh, every so often, I like to come to you and to speak to you about how uh, we want you to help us to spread the gospel all around the world. You know, uh, it takes uh, quite a bit of uh, work to put things together uh, regarding uh, a TV program uh, that brings out the word of God. And so we want to uh, give you an opportunity as I said every so often, uh, for you to send your love offerings uh, uh, to this ministry so we can continue to uh, uh, present this word of God, and not only on the internet as we do, but also on television stations around the world. Now let me tell you this, that it is truly a blessing uh, to be called by God to teach his word. And it's also a blessing to have uh, the uh, privilege of sharing this word uh, on television and other 
forms of media. And television, of course, is quite an expensive proposition, and yet our God is, is our source. And so we choose uh, in this ministry to sow into other ministries so that we can harvest what the Bible tells us and that we will harvest if we sow a seed. And I should tell you this, that as the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, they give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. So with that, I want to say to you that God will himself see to it that every seed uh, that you sow into this ministry or any other ministry uh, will come to you uh, in a harvest form more than it is that uh, the amount that you sowed. Now, quite often, uh, people hear this and they say, oh, okay, I will do it next time. Uh, why don't you, at least today, say that you do it today? And why don't you take a, a pencil and a paper and, and write down what you see scrolling at the bottom of the television and, and uh, send us a, a, a love offering, a letter, something in the mail to let us know that you are there. Uh, and we will be very, very happy uh, to know that uh, God is uh, sending us uh, supporters uh, and partners to help get the word of God out. You know, uh, we pray for our Veen audience that this word as they hear will make a mark on their lives that can never be erased. We pray for your, our Veen audience that uh, as they watch the program, whatever the need might be, that God will sovereignly assist and help them uh, with that need. Uh, we pray for our partners uh, also uh, those who decide to send us a love offering every month, we pray for them, uh, not only myself and, uh, and my wife, uh, Pastor Carissa, but also uh, the intercessors of our church uh, to pray, to see to it that, uh, that our partners' uh, needs are met, that God himself is uh, uh, doing a mighty work in their lives because we believe that uh, your seed of love, of an offering, um, must uh, return back to you with a, a love of a harvest back to you. And whatever the need might be, uh, we trust that the seed uh, that you sow into this ministry will be that need. May God continue to bless you as you watch us. May God continue to increase you more and more. May God himself uh, open the windows of heaven to pour out a blessing upon your life, such where you cannot even contain it. Uh, we want to thank you for the work that uh, uh, you are doing in the kingdom of God, uh, in viewing this program. Uh, in supporting this program, in praying for this program. It is really a wonderful thing indeed to have uh, people out there who uh, partner with us and contribute so often to this ministry. We have been on and you've been helping us to sustain us. God bless you. And let me tell you this, as often I try to remember, I remind you on this, remember that Jesus is Lord. And with all you're getting, get understanding. For the word of God changes lives and changes mine and yours. And love never fails. God bless you.